Hello everyone, my name is Anyakpur. Today we are going to study about the autocycle and how to derive an equation of thermal efficiency of an autocycle. Let us first discuss about what is autocycle. Autocycle was invented by a German engineer named Nicholas Otto. It is defined as idealized thermodynamic cycle that describes the functioning of a typical spark ignition engine, which we studied about it in the previous lecture. If you haven't yet referred to my previous lecture, please do. It's lecture 2, the working cycle of SI engine. Now moving forward, a thermodynamic cycle of 4 stroke SI engine basically consists of 4 phase or 4 stroke. They are induction stroke, compression stroke, working or expansion stroke and exhaust stroke. This thermodynamic cycle is most commonly found in automobile engine. The pressure versus volume term of this cycle is as shown in this figure. Now before going into the depth, let us first discuss the basic terminology which will be helpful for finding the efficiency of an engine working on auto cycle. The important terminologies which, are going to, which we are going to discuss are compression ratio, thermal efficiency, specific heat, adiabatic process, isentropic process, combined gas law and isochoric process. Now the first one is compression ratio. It is defined as the ratio of the maximum volume to the minimum volume in the cylinder of an internal combustion engine. It is denoted by RC which is equals to maximum volume by minimum volume. The volume in the cylinder is basically the volume entrapped between the piston and the cylinder wall. Here Vs is known as swept volume. The swept volume is the volume between the top dead center and the bottom dead center. As piston move from one dead center to another, it sweeps the volume, thus it is called as swept volume. Here Vc is known as clearance volume. It is the volume between the top dead center and the cylinder head. It is also defined as the volume of a cylinder that is not swept by the piston. Thus Rc can be rewritten as Vs plus Vc upon Vc where Vs is equal to swept volume and Vc is equal to clearance volume. Now in order to find the compression ratio, let's take an example. The total or maximum volume that is swept volume plus clearance volume is given as 14 cc which is basically 14 cubic centimeter. And the minimum volume is given as 1 cubic centimeter. Therefore, the compression ratio for this system will be equal to 14 is to 1. I hope you got what is compression ratio. Next is thermal efficiency. It is simply defined as the efficiency of heat engine measured by the ratio of work done by the engine to the heat supplied to it. That is efficiency is equal to work done upon heat supply that is output upon input. As we can see in this figure, in our case, heat supplied, that is Q in, will be the combustion process occurring inside the cylinder due to spark produced by spark plug. Work done will be the heat supplied minus heat rejected. So, we can rewrite the efficiency of SI engine as Q in minus Q out, that is work done upon Q in, which is equals to heat supplied. Next is specific heat. Specific heat is defined as the amount of heat per unit mass required to raise the temperature by 1 degree Celsius. It is given by formula as Q equals to C times M times delta T, where C is specific heat, M is unit mass and delta T is basically the change in temperature. The specific heat at constant pressure is denoted by Cp, whereas the specific heat at constant volume is denoted by Cv. Now, as we can see in this figure, in order to heat up 1 kg of water and increase its temperature by 1 degree C, it will require more amount of calories or let's say more amount of heat as compared to 1 kg of gold. That is 1 kg of gold will readily heat up. Next is adiabatic and isentropic process an adiabatic process is that which occurs without transfer of heat or matter between the thermodynamic system and its surrounding 
whereas an isentropic process is an idealized thermodynamic process that is adiabatic and in which the work transfer of the system are frictionless, there is no transfer of heat or matter and the process is reversible. One important point to note down is that entropy is generated by irreversibility and accompanies with heat transfer. Hence, in, hence in reversible adiabatic process, no heat trans that is no heat transfer, entropy remains constant. Right? So this is known as isentropic process. This is generally named as constant entropy process. Next is combined gas law. Recall from the chemistry class that the combined gas law is a gas law that combines Charles law, Boyle's law and gay lussac law. It is given by PV upon T is equals to C. That is pressure volume upon temperature is constant. Also for reversible adiabatic process that is isentropic process an ideal gas can also be represented by polytropic process equation that is PV raised to N is equals to C or else PV raised to gamma equals to C that is constant where gamma is the ratio of specific heat at constant pressure and at constant volume. Now the last one is isochoric process. An isochoric process also called as constant volume process is a thermodynamic process during which the volume of the closed system undergoing such a process remains constant. Here the thermodynamic process which I am talking about is the addition or removal of heat from the system. Now, next is derivation. Now moving forward, a thermodynamic cycle of an SI engine consists of four strokes. Induction stroke, compression stroke, expansion or power stroke and exhaust stroke. This we have already studied in our previous lecture. If you haven't referred it yet, please do. It's lecture 2, the working cycle of an SI engine. Now, an internal combustion engine operates on an open cycle. Since its working fluid is thrown out of the engine at some point instead of being returned to its initial state. That means the working fluid does not undergo a complete thermodynamic cycle. A detailed study of the performance of an actual gas power cycle is rather complex. An accurate modeling of internal combustion engines normally involves computer simulation. Now to conduct elementary thermodynamic analysis of internal combustion engines, considerable simulation is required. To simplify the analysis, air standard assumptions are made. They are gas and air mixture are modeled as air and an ideal gas which continuously circulate in a closed cycle. Thus, there are no intake and exhaust processes. Second is, all the processes making up the cycle are internally reversible. That is no entropy loss. Third is, the combustion process is replaced by a heat addition process from an external source. And the fourth assumption is, the exhaust process is replaced by a heat rejection process and the gas returns to its initial state. Now, let us study about the PV diagram that is pressure versus volume diagram and temperature versus entropy diagram of an SI engine. The auto cycle is the ideal cycle for spark ignition reciprocating engine. It serves as a theoretical model for the gasoline engine. The auto cycle consists of four internally reversible processes. They are isentropic compression, constant volume heat addition, isentropic expansion and the fourth one is constant volume heat rejection process. Now let us first understand the figures on here. As we can see the piston which is currently at the BDC that is bottom dead center. This is spark plug and these are intake valve and exhaust valve. Now the piston moves from bottom dead center to top dead center or from TDC to BDC in each stroke. The volume between BDC and TDC is known as swept volume which we, which we have already studied previously. Now the volume between TDC and the cylinder head is the clearance volume Vc. 
okay so from this diagram we can say that the vs that is clearance volume will be equal to v1 minus v2 and our clearance volume vc will be equal to v2 and our total volume will be equal to v1 okay now moving forward now during process 1 to 2 processes that is from 1 to 2 the piston moves from bdc to tdc forming an isentropic compression that is an reversible adiabatic compression which is no entropy loss as we can see from this one 1 to 2 there is no entropy loss in the process during process 2 to 3 the constant volume heat as heat addition takes place that is the combustion of mixture present in the cylinder in known ideal case now during 1 to 2 process the piston moves from BDC to TDC forming isentropic compression or we can also say that the forming reversible adiabatic compression that is no entropy loss as we can see in this diagram. As the piston moves from BDC to TDC in process 1 to 2, the pressure inside the cylinder will increase whereas the volume of the cylinder will decrease which is shown by this graph. Now during two to three processes when piston reaches TDC the constant volume heat addition takes place that is the combustion of mixture in present of the cylinder in known ideal case here we know that the heat addition can be given by Q I N which will be equal to M C delta T right Q I N can also be written as M C V that is constant volume specific heat at the constant volume and delta T is T3 minus T2 this is temperature at point 3 minus temperature at point 2 this is temperature after combustion and temperature before combustion now considering this equation as equation 1 Now for process 3 to 4. During the stroke, the piston moves from TDC to BDC, forming isentropic expansion or reversible adiabatic expansion. There is no entropy loss. Now for, for, for process 4 to 1, during this process, when the piston reaches BDC, the exhaust valve opens and the exhaust residual which are present inside the cylinder moves out forming constant volume heat rejection thus during process 4 to 1 constant volume heat rejection takes place now we know that the heat addition or heat rejection can be given by a formula as mc delta t here we know it's a constant volume process because it's an ideal cycle we have assumed this as an ideal cycle so it will be M into specific heat at constant volume into change in temperature which will be higher temperature minus lower temperature that is T4 minus T1 so our heat rejection equation will be MCV T4 minus T1 considering this as equation 2 now from process 1 to 0 and 0 to 1 this process happens when the engine is working in open loop. In ideal auto cycle, we assume that the engine is in closed loop. When the engine is running in open loop, the piston at point 1, that is BDC, will move towards the TDC. And also as the exhaust valve is open, the residual gases are thrown out of the engine via exhaust valve. At a and the gases which are thrown out from the exhaust valve are at the constant pressure. Now once it reaches TDC, exhaust valve closes and inlet valve opens. The piston starts moving from TDC to BDC and during this fresh charge 
that is air and fuel mixture are inducted into the cylinder at constant pressure. That is the process 0 to 1. One more thing, we know that the compression ratio of an engine is given by RC. That is RC can be written as maximum volume by minimum volume, right? Now, here maximum volume is RC is basically V1 that is Vs plus Vc upon Vc. We have studied this previously, right? Now, we know Vs is equals to V1 minus V2 and we know Vc is equals to V2. Thus, Vs plus Vc will be equal to V1 minus V2 plus V2 which will give eventually give us V1 upon Vc that is V2. Considering this equation as equation number 3. Now we have all the things that is required to find the efficiency of an ideal SI engine. That is we have heat supplied equation, we have heat rejected equation and we have compression ratio. Now moving forward, these are basically the heat supplied, heat rejected and compression ratio. Now moving forward, the efficiency of an SI engine is given by output upon input that is work done upon heat supplied. We already know that the heat supplied of the system of the engine is given by MCV T3 minus T2, right? Now, for work done, work done is basically heat supplied minus heat rejected, as I explained earlier. Now, heat supplied is given by equation one, that is MCV T3 minus T2, right? And heat rejected is M. CV T4 minus T1. Considering this as equation number 4, right? And this is equation number 5, right? Now, substituting equation 1 and equation number 4 in equation 5, what we'll get? Efficiency will be equal to M C V T3 minus T2 minus of M C V T4 minus of T1 divided by heat supplied that is M C V T3 minus T2. Right? Now dividing this one with the numerator, what we'll get? We'll get efficiency as this by this is minus. So 1 minus M C V T4 minus T1 upon M C V T3 minus T2. So our final equation for our efficiency of an SI engine can be given by 1 minus T4 minus T1 upon T3 minus T2. Considering this as equation number 6. Also, the process 1 to 2 is a reversible adiabatic process, that is an isentropic process. We know that for isentropic process, PV raised to gamma is equals to constant. Okay, so our pros for, for our process 1 to 2, we can write it as P1 V1 raised to gamma will be equal to P2 V2 raised to gamma because there is no entropy loss. Right? Now, taking this V2 over here, we can write it as P2 upon P1 equal to V1 upon V2 raised to gamma. But we know that the V1 upon V2 is basically our compression ratio. So we can write it as P2 upon P1 is equals to RC raised to gamma. Considering this as equation number 7.
Also, we know that the P V by T is constant. That is the combined gas law equation. For process 1 to 2, that is a no entropy loss process, P1 V1 upon T1 will be equal to P2 V2 upon T2. Taking this T2 over here, we can write it as T2 upon T1 which will be equal to P2 V2 upon P1 V1. We know that from previous equation we have calculated our P2 upon P1 which is equals to RC raised to gamma. So we can substitute this value into our new equation. This equation will become RC raised to gamma times V2 by V1. We also know that the V1 upon V2 is equals to RC. This is the compression ratio. So we can write it at, as T2 upon T1 is equals to RC raised to gamma upon RC. That is 1 upon RC. This can be written as RC raised to gamma minus 1 which is T2. Considering this as equation number 8. Now we know that the process 3 and 4 is also an reversible adiabatic expansion process or an isentropic expansion process. We can follow the same procedure over here. That is for process 3 to 4 we know that the PV raised to gamma will be equal to constant that is P3 V3 raised to gamma equal to P4 V4 raised to gamma. We know that P, after taking P4 over here we can write, rewrite this equation as P3 by P4 equal to V4 by V3 raised to gamma. Right? Now, from this diagram, we understood that the RC, that is compression ratio, is V1 upon V2. We also know that the V1 is equals to V4 and V2 is equals to V3. So instead of writing RC as V1 upon V2, we can also write it as V4 upon V3, which is basically same as this one. Therefore, we can write it as P4 upon P3 upon P4 is equals to V1 upon V2 raised to gamma, which is RC raised to gamma. That is our P3 by P4. We also know that, that from combined case law P V by T is equals to constant. Therefore, for process 3 to 4, we can rewrite it as P3 V3 upon T3 equal to P4 V4 upon T4. Taking T3 over here, we can rewrite it as T3 upon T4 equal to P3 V3 upon P4 V4. We know that the P3 by P4 is basically RC raised to gamma. Therefore, T3 upon T4 will be equal to RC raised to gamma times V3 by V4. We know V4 is equals to V1 and V3 equals to V2. Therefore, this will be equal to 1 by RC, which implies T3 upon T4 equal to RC raised to gamma upon RC. Therefore, our new equation for T3 will be equal to T4 times RC raised to gamma minus 1.
consider this as equation 9. Now I forgot to tell you about how why we found out the value for T2 and T3. As we proved, the efficiency is given by this equation. That is, eta is equals to 1 minus T4 minus T1 upon T3 minus T2. As we can see in this equation, there are four unknowns. And in order to calculate this value, it becomes an hectic job. So in order to simplify this equation, if we can somehow obtain the relationship between this value or if we can somehow change this equation into the volume dependent instead of temperature dependent equation, it will become a simplified task to find the efficiency of an ideal engine cycle. So in order to do this, what we did is that we calculated the value of T3 and T2 in terms of T4 and T1. As we can see that the T2 is in terms of T1 whereas T3 is in terms of T4. If we substitute this equation in this efficiency equation, we can somehow get rid of this temperature dependent values. And we can convert this efficiency in terms of volume dependent. Now, we know that the efficiency of an engine is given by 1 minus T4 minus T1 upon T3 minus T2. We also calculated the value of T2 which is equals to T1 into Rc raised to gamma minus 1 and T3 which is equals to T4 into Rc raised to gamma minus 1. Substituting these two equations in the above equation. What we can get? E efficiency is equals to 1 minus T4 minus T1 upon T3 which is equals to T4 into Rc raised to gamma minus 1 minus T2 that is T1 into Rc raised to gamma minus 1. These two terms are common in this equation so taking this out we can write it as 1 upon 1 by R C raised to gamma minus 1 times T4 minus T1 divided by T4 minus T1. Correct? So our efficiency at the end will be, be, uh, will be equal to 1 minus 1 upon R C raised to gamma minus 1. Where R C is basically the compression ratio which is equals to V1 by V2 or V4 by V3 and gamma is equals to specific heat that is equals to Cp by Cv. These two values are constant in the uh, idle process and if we know the volume that is the total volume and the clearance volume we can easily calculate the efficiency of an ideal engine cycle. So at the end to summarize the efficiency of an SI engine is given by 1 minus 1 upon RC raised to gamma minus 1. I hope you understand how we can how we calculated this efficiency of an SI engine. Please before going do like and subscribe to our channel. Thank you. Bye bye. See you next time.